When Yahweh set before his people the blessing and the curse, amazingly, some chose the curse. And amazingly, some are still choosing the curse today. Hi, this is Barry Phillips with 10 Minute Tour, day number one, a tour portion, Re'e. We begin in Devarim, Deuteronomy, if you will, chapter number 11 and verse number 26 that says, See, I am setting before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing when you obey the commands of Yahweh your Elohim, which I command you today, and the curse if you do not obey the commands of Yahweh your Elohim, but turn aside from the way which I command you today to go after other mighty ones which you have not known. Why? The question has to be asked whether we can come up with an answer that is reasonable or not. The question has to be asked, why would someone do this? Why would they reject an obvious blessing of Yah for a curse? My question is this, and I don't have an answer. Uh, Why put a curse before Israel at all? Why not just say to them, Yahweh is blessing you? I choose to call you Am Israel. I choose to give you this land. I choose to raise up a leader like Yehoshua to lead you. I choose to give you rain in its season and abundant crops at their time. I choose to put your adversaries to flight in front of you. I choose to do all of this. I choose to bless you. So what is before you is the blessing. But then he also says, and I place before you the curse. Now again, one would think it's a no-brainer. Why why even consider this? If we go to the book of Yehoshua, chapter number 24, and begin reading with verse number 15, we find this. Yehoshua, at the end of his days, makes this statement. And if it seems evil in your eyes to serve Yahweh, evil to serve Yahweh? If it seems evil in your eyes to serve Yahweh, Choose for yourself this day whom you're going to serve, whether the mighty ones which your fathers served that were beyond the river or the mighty ones of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But I and my house, we serve Yahweh. Now, verse 16 and following says, And the people answered and said, Far be it from us to forsake Yahweh to serve other mighty ones. For Yahweh our Elohim is he who has brought us And our fathers up out of the land of Mitzrayim from the house of bondage who did these great signs before our eyes and has guarded us in all the way that we went and among all the people through whom we passed. And Yahweh drove out from before us all the people, even the Amorites who dwelt in the land. We too serve Yahweh for he is our Elohim. It's all resolved. Not quite. Verse 19, then Yehoshua said to the people, you are not able to serve Yahweh. For he is a set apart El, a jealous El is he. He does not bear with your transgression and with your sins. If you forsake Yahweh and shall serve mighty ones of a stranger, then he shall turn back and do you evil and consume you after he has been good to you. Now the people answer said, no, 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 we're, we're, we're going to serve Yahweh. Well, the historical drama that unfolds in the scriptures revealed that they did not keep their promise. Uh, it didn't take long until other generations rose up and they quickly turned aside from the way that Yah had called them to walk in and they chose other gods. Now, when it comes to idolatry, which, again, this is the basis of the curse. Yah says, if you will follow me and keep my word and walk in my ways, then you will find the blessing. The land will work the way it's supposed to. All the promises will come to pass. It will flow with milk and honey. 
you will be well housed, well fed, well cared for, and you will live in safety and peace. What more could anyone ask? The problem is the Torah, the commands of Yah, points out sin. Rav Shaul writes about this much later and says that the, the issue with the Torah is that it points out our sin. It names sin as sin. 1 Yochanan, 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, sin is the transgression of the Torah. Without the Torah, there's no sin. Mankind does not want to be told how to live. It's as basic and as simple as that. And even those of us who claim to be known by his name, who call him our father, who serve him, pray, read his word, cry out to him, there is still that element of the evil inclination that resides within us that says, I don't want to live this way. And there is this idea of reasonable, justified rebellion. Uh, <laughs> Rav Shula also writes about this in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. He talks about casting down imaginations, strongholds, the idea of taking rebellious, evil inclination thoughts and bringing it, bringing it under the mastery of Yeshua the Messiah. To walk according to your own inclination is to walk in idolatry. It is to serve the glamorous images of this world. It is to fall down before the gods of mammon and wealth. It is eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It is uh, a, a long list. I, I, I won't exhaust that. But nevertheless, there is this understanding that if you choose the bracha, this is what you're choosing. You're choosing to bow down before one who is greater than yourself and have them to lay their hand upon you and pronounce by his word, their word, a blessing of mercy and benevolence upon you, vowing to be your protector and your guardian. This also implies that the one who is bowing down and receiving this bracha, this blessing, will live their lives in such a way as to promote the honor of and give honor to the blessor. This is a fair trade. Yah has placed his hands upon us. He has given to us the Torah, his word. He has promised to us his benevolence, his mercy, and his benefit. In return, we honor him by living in such a way to promote him, to exemplify him, to magnify him. For he is then worthy. So it comes down to me choosing the blessing means then that I would live a life of servitude, gratitude, and submission to the authority of he who has blessed me. We resist such requirements as we've been taught not to trust those who have authority. Take this job and shove it. Getting over, being the the uh, the man has been getting over on me. Uh, the tyrant at work, uh, an, an ungrateful boss situation. My spouse doesn't understand and know me, so therefore I don't trust them. On and on the list goes. Today, it's the throwing off of law enforcement and federal authorities. And so we, we have this mistrust of those who have authority because over the years, those in authority have not proven themselves worthy of trustworthiness, of, uh, of being uh, depended upon to be true to the word. Yah's not like them. We can trust them. Yeshua says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Then it's even possible for you and I to keep the commandments but not love Yeshua. And in doing so, we miss the whole point. The blessing is before us. If we're willing to bow our knee and allow him to put the bracha upon us and live our lives in such ways to honor and glorify him.
The curse is also before us if we're willing to choose to walk in our own understanding and our own knowledge. We can be religious. We can, uh, we can even keep commands. But we can still keep the curse. Which way are you going to choose today? More tomorrow. Until then, shalom.